Hi, I'm Ed Edmonds with Distortions and you're watching Monster Lab. Now, we've gotten a number of requests of people wanting to set up their own Monster Lab. Rather than type my fingers to the bone, I thought this would be a good opportunity to cover all that stuff. I mean everything you need to buy and have at hand to make your own monsters. The good news is you can make any kind of monster you can dream up once you have all these tools. The bad news is it's a lot of stuff. But the other good news is it doesn't cost a lot. Now you could buy huge bulk amounts of stuff. You don't need to do that to start. Just get enough to get a couple projects going. But the tools you need and the different ingredients and how to set things up, that can be very, very time consuming. So I would recommend that you pause this and get like a notepad and a pen. And then if you need to pause it, periodically write stuff down, write it down, get this list. And when you finish, what's really cool about this, you can make any kind of monster you can dream up in your head and you'll have all the tools right there to do it. And so if you're serious about being a monster maker, this is the tape for you. Okay, let's get comfortable. Now, I want you to think about something. Through all these Monster Lab videos, I'm showing you everything I know how to make monsters. And now I'm gonna show you every single supply and how to set up your entire facility to make monsters. So potentially, I could be making monster factories open up all over the country and put us out of business. Don't forget to say thank you. Or, the old man's losing his mind. Either one works. <laughs> Let's get started. Alrighty then, one of the first things you're going to need is a bust to sculpt on. Now, <clears throat> this is a plaster one I made a cast of my head many years ago. I think this may be the same one I made in the 80s, I'm not sure. Plaster is great, it lasts for a long time, but it's very hard to make that. Um, so there's a lot of heads you can sculpt on in the industry. Um, some of the better ones are like fiberglass, they're really stout and tough so you got to have that then this is sitting on see that how nice that is sitting on a lazy susan now this was made with two round pieces of wood and just a little metal lazy susan you can buy at the lumber yard you're going to need pottery straps i would get an old crummy microwave oven this is good for softening oil-based clay and things like that. Um, a refrigerator, because, you know, it's nice to have beverages nearby. A sound system. Now, this isn't absolutely necessary, but it is for me, so I'm thinking maybe it might be for you too. Uh, now, this one shouldn't be too loud. Now, upstairs, different story, paint room. This is more, mm, I don't want to say coffee mocha sculpting, but it's more subdued you're, you're 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 a little more creative a little less physical uh so nice you know like uh surround sound system's nice that's what i've got here um you'll need mass latex and you'll need plaster now we use usg pottery plaster there's other things there's molding plaster there's ultra cal um you can play with those but Pottery plaster works pretty darn good, and, and it's easy, and I would recommend USG number one pottery plaster, at least to get started with. Um, shelves. I have shelves here. Shelves come in very handy. Now, one little hack is that you can find things. You know, you drive it around. You, you're driving uh, behind a, 
uh, some kind of grocery store or something. There's shelves out there or something. Well, now some of those are not for trash, but make sure they're trash and stuff. You can make stuff cheap, but you can also buy really cheap plastic shelves. Um, miscellaneous tools, a hammer, uh, one, two, and three inch wood screws, because sometimes you're making armatures and things. Um, duct tape, who doesn't use duct tape? Two or three chairs, and adjustable chairs are nice. Um, a lot of times high chairs are nice, um, depending on your tables and things. Um, and then tables. Now this table is metal, and it's very durable and and uh, you can hammer it to get plaster off it whatever you got to do but a couple of tables is good because you might have a couple of projects going on at the same time you might have a table used for plaster and a table used for sculpting so tables very important um and then you might get a third table now the third table is for nice things like drafting table, drawing, illustrating if you're charging a lot. Um, big trash cans. We use 50 gallon drums because we get the latex in it, but something big because you are going to generate a lot of trash. Um, wed clay. Now this stuff, this is You may not be able to find this easy in your area. And the problem is, um, is Laguna Wed Clay, W-E-D Wed Clay. Um, that's the problem. It's heavy. So um, you want to kind of try to find a local supplier. Reynolds sells it. You can have it shipped to you. Hopefully there's a big city nearby we can go pick it up because they stuff they have the stuff trucked in if you have ups haul it around pretty expensive this is a 50 pound box um and you go through a lot of it this now oil-based clay you can use over and over wood clay not so much um broom scoop shovel and when i say a broom i kind of like the old-fashioned like like this push brooms are good too but i don't know they're not as maneuverable uh, lights. So now, like a light like this is good. Um, it's any kind of gooseneck light is what you're looking for that, that you can aim at the sculpture. And I would get a couple of them so you can light your sculpture well. It's very frustrating when you can't see well and, and uh, you're trying to see fine details. Pens, paper, magic markers, all this stuff for um, writing things down, measuring, making notes to yourself. Uh, another thing that's really nice is to have a makeup morgue. Well, it's called a makeup morgue, but you're actually, it's more like a monster morgue. And this is pictures that you've seen in magazines, uh, photographs of, you know, some friends that did a great makeup or something you've, you've, you've taken a picture of. Um, but anything that impresses you, is really nice to have. Um, buckets to clean up in, plastic buckets like this, five gallon buckets, um, having quite a few of those around. I mean, it's not only um, cleaning your hands, but it's mixing plaster, it's yeah, other chemicals. If you get into silicones and things, five gallon buckets, very good and smaller. There's also um, buckets this size, little things like this. You can put water in, so forth um plastic bags now these are nice for sealing a sculpture but you just put it over the thing tight tighten it around the neck now some people don't seal their stuff very well and uh they think they're going to get back to it right away they don't oh my it's hard too bad um so make sure you really tighten it up around you can put a rubber band around it you can tie it but really get it tough it, spray it down with a little water before you put your sculptures away but plastic bags very important um, now another thing when you're washing your hands use a bucket with water in it and get them really clean because um, you go washing your hands in the sink with plaster you'll be sorry 
and somebody will make you even sorrier. Critical stuff. New alert. Improvised nuclear Dirty bomb. Dirty bomb. Casual Barrage fire. Um, and so this, uh, little buckets, big buckets. Also, natural sponges. Now these work great for a lot of things, but especially texturing um, your characters, or more than texturing, kind of pushing the clay around, giving it an organic feel. Spray bottles, have a few of these around. Rubber gloves. Now, clay and plaster aren't too bad, but you know, start painting with inks and things. It just gets irritating. Uh, getting your hands all messy. Another thing I didn't bring down was a hand scrubber. Get one of those hand scrubbers. You can scrub your fingernails good because whether it's clay or plaster or paint or whatever, it's really nice to have. Um, a, um, another thing is, that's nice to have, now this isn't in the have to, but a bandsaw, a small bandsaw, not some big fancy gonna put a house together, but a bandsaw that um, has a little blade for cutting wood, for armatures and things. Um, and and we, we've got a little one down here, it works great. Plywood, just get some three quarter, get a sheet of three quarter plywood, or eh, that's kind of hard to haul around. Sometimes they have smaller pieces you can get. And also um, a jigsaw is nice, especially if you don't have a bandsaw. Get a little jigsaw so you can cut the wood two by fours, and two by twos. You can pretty much make any kind of armature you need to with those. So, another thing, gotta have, and you can pick the stuff you like. This, this is uh, facial expressions, and in here is hundreds, if not thousands, of facial expressions that are very helpful. You think you know what a smile looks like. Well, let me tell you, your face moves all over the place with a smile or a frown or whatever. And then there's subtle things. If you're doing human anatomy, it's really important, but even monster anatomy, you need to know how the face crunches up stuff. This is Atlas of Anatomy for Artists. This has been well beat up. It's got skeletons, muscles. This, this stuff's really important. As you can see, this has been uh, used a lot. This I've got in here, uh, I, we were doing some kids. This is a baby, uh, baby care, and it's got uh, all sorts of pictures of children's faces, smiling, crying, and so forth. Not necessarily an artist book, but you need stuff like that when you're sculpting different things. Okay, so I put this stuff in these cases just because it's easy. Um, we're going to have one of these in the paint room too. Now, if this is all in one room, you don't need two, but a battery drill is very handy. You, you can use uh, uh, corded drills, but it's not quite as convenient. A stapler with staples, um, a razor knife. Some of these will be duplicated. Now this, Elmer's glue. We uh, had a guy out, Ken Stanell, he was a, um, <coughs> a mold maker, and uh, this is a little trick he used to put Elmer's glue, rub it, like if a mold breaks, you rub it on both sides of where it's cracked and squish it together, clean off anywhere where it sticks out, and mold's fixed. A timer. Now this comes in handy when you got a appointment to get to or something, and you get so wrapped up in your sculpture, you're like in the zone, and then it's like, bing, oh, I gotta go. Trust me on these. I mean, you know, it sounds like, yeah, I don't really need that. Well, probably screwdrivers, Phillips, regular, regular are more important than Phillips, I've found. Tape measure, any old tape measure will do. Um, you can get some little things like scissors, Magic markers, sandpaper comes in handy. Now, uh, you wouldn't think so, you wouldn't need it that much, but I don't know, I sure end up needing it. I've got rivets in here for armatures and things, uh, like um, um, articulated faces and stuff. Wouldn't worry about that too much right now. That, get into more complicated stuff. These, these are down the road monster labs. But just basic, tools. Just go to the lumberyard and pick out some 
nice ones and, um, and, and a case to put them in. Okay, this is all sorts of things that I use. Now, I am not going to show you 5,000 tools. I took a lot of tools out here that I almost never use and, you know, it's just a waste of time. But this little critter, Slammer. Now, you can do this with a 4x4 four four if you've really got big sculptures. But I just took a 2x4 and cut it and, and rounded off the edges so that you can slap that clay. And let me tell you, this, when you're doing something of any size, really comes in handy. Oh, and a, another little trick, you can wrap this with duct tape and the duct tape will not stick to the sculpture too bad. Hair dryer, very important. Um, hair dryer, when you're sculpting, it just comes in very handy. This, calipers. You'd be surprised how often you need calipers. You can measure your own skull, distance between your pupils for figuring out where holes need to go. Very, very helpful. I use that all the time. This little tool and this little tool. Now these two are two of my favorite. They've got teeth on one side and uh, this loop one, it, different functions a little bit, but I honestly, I use this one a lot. You would think, well, you're sculpting organic things. Uh, actually, I think I use this one more. I don't know why. These are very, you, you just got to have them. Don't think, oh, I don't need those. You got to have those. Uh, in fact, everything I'm showing you, except for this, you pretty much have to have I, uh, when it comes to tools. This is just an example of, we had Mike weld this up. It's just some wire bent, and we were doing a giant monster, like a 16-foot monster or something. And uh, this was made skin texture stuff, worked great. So you may make your own weird tools. Now this is a sheet of metal and it's smooth all the way around and it really helps with shaping. Now there's rubber versions of these, they help too. The, I like the metal ones better though I use them both. Hairbrush. Now this kind of has little dots of plastic on the ends. It's great for pores, texturing, just different things. You can get, you can find weird stuff like this and, and, um, and use it. Now this is something I really love. This is a clay cutter. <clears throat> when the clay is in the brick form, you can adjust this to whatever height. If you have a plaster bust, I would put, I put on one half inch <clears throat> over the whole thing. Now that allows for shrinkage and thickness of the rubber and uh, the only caveat to that is up on top I get it real thin it's like an eighth inch and then it starts at an eighth inch and then it gets thicker and thicker till it meets you know the crown of your head basically um, so this tool super nice you can do it with a wire you can do it with a knife just get it you're gonna have to trust me on some of this stuff this spatula you can get big ones small ones this size seems to work good for scraping stuff up very very handy Spray paint. When you finish your sculpture, a lot of times, if you can wait overnight or at least a few hours with a fan on it, um, it just makes cleaning the mold tremendously easier. So uh, we use leather brown, but I think just because we're used to it, I know it works. Now that's gloss leather brown and it's a Krylon product. This is gloss gray. I'm sure it works just as well. We're just, I don't know, when you make mistakes, you get paranoid. And so if something works, you just quit messing around. This is a thick, unlike this other one, that's real thin, flexible metal to bend around stuff. This one's thick and um, it's got teeth on one side. This really helps out when you're cleaning up dams and things. Um, it's not super useful, except in the very early stages of uh, getting large proportions figured out on your uh, sculpture or uh, worked in. This is a slightly rubbery plastic tool. Same kind of thing, it's curved. It's got different, you know, like tight curve, loose curve, and then a right angle. Use this all the time. A knife. <clears throat> now, a, a lot, maybe most of the sculptors, they have these knives, really sharp. 
I don't know why, because it actually cuts through clay harder in my opinion, and it's dangerous. So when I get these knives, I actually grind them down. Don't get serrated, get smooth, and it, they just don't need to be dangerous. There's nothing that when you're cutting clay or something, I just don't, I don't get it. It, it. You know, so you reach into your tool case, you're trying to find something, and the next thing you know, ouch. Oh, oh my. All right, another different shape of thin metal tool scissors now you may not be able to find orange and black scissors but if you can get the orange and black ones but use them a lot now this i just have a bunch texture pads you can cast things like uh grapefruit orange juice, luggage there is textures everywhere and you just you take the latex uh thick latex or just build it up thick uh, i would say these are at least an eighth of an inch thick uh, and you push that into the clay sculpture and just build up a bunch of them. Now, this is another example of texture pad. This was made for me by Greg Dykstra uh, from Pixar, which was very nice of him. I love this thing. It was made out of lava stone and then he made a mold and, and then cast it and bent it. And oh man, those are, you can't get that anywhere. Again, it's a, it's a self-made tool, a texture tool. This is another, you have to have to have it. It's like a little finger on one side and then um, it, they're wooden and it just, you can get into much finer details that your finger can't do. Now this is an interesting tool, works great for teeth and things. It's rubbery on the end. It's, it's got a, uh, it's, it, it's a wood uh, thing with a rubber that just, boy, you can get in there and smooth the clay and, make the crease um these now we cast these you can buy these at a hobby store this is a wooden ball and you can get them in different sizes i recommend casting them uh you know maybe squishing them into clay or something so you get half of the circle and then you can pour two-part plastic into it make something like this that you can stick into sculptures the the big ball eyes too awkward um, they don't have to be half of a spear uh, they can be less it, you know sometimes you get like if you're working on plasters or you get you don't have as much room but um, get a bunch of these in a bunch of sizes and just have them around try not to lose them um, glasses as you get older you have infirmities so uh, i need glasses this tool is going to be hard to see so i'm going to describe it it again is a little finger tool on this side the wood side and this side it's a teeny little wire that kind of goes into a v and boy i go through a few of these because they break pretty fast but wow is this a great tool for coming in and getting those fine little wrinkles uh you know another thing i stuck this in there this wouldn't normally be in my tool case vaseline we use it a lot now vaseline's not a good thing for rubber but um you can use it to, as a mold separator. You know, you put on the front part of a mold and then just right where the plaster is gonna hit more plaster, you can put this on, thin it out, don't get it too thick. Thin it out, make sure the, the uh, plaster doesn't stick to each other. Now these, this one's kind of beat up, but this is like a very mm, porous, airy black sponge. Uh, I think you can get them at makeup supplies. You may have to go to, um, uh, the internet to find it, but these are so great. You get them wet and you can just really smooth your, um, your uh, character out. This one's a little beat, but it's basically a wire with two sticks. You use this all the time when you have to make major changes, especially on big sculptures. Little sponges, just like the big sponges, real organic sponges. Here's another example of a small sponge it, this is a real sponge though it's it, they're, they're better um more examples of uh the thin metal for shaping and scraping now this is another tool you have to have you you can't live without it this is thin metal but it's rounded and it has little teeth all the way around you will use this all the time and it's great for shaping because you can, it'll bend as you as you scrape it across you can bend it and it just helps you shape the large anatomy 
magic markers, always good. Now this is one of those, like the metal tool, except this is rubbery. And I use these sometimes. I end up using the metal ones more, but this comes in handy too. Um, paint brushes, just cheap old chip brushes are nice. However, you do want to have uh, an artist brush for smaller details. These are really, really helpful. Uh, and you can have a few different sizes. This one's probably a quarter inch. Um, and you know, if you got lots of money and want to buy lots of sizes, well and why not? Here is another sculpting tool. Now this has like a fat finger thing on the end. I don't usually use that. It's this pointy side. Man, does this work great for wrinkles and all sorts of kind of medium anatomy things. It's nice to have a pen in there just because it's nice to have a little point. You can put your copyright on it. Don't forget your copyright. Circle C, the year you made it, and then the name of your company or your name. That's called a simple copyright. And legally, you got at least 50 years. I don't know, it may be longer nowadays. Uh, there's been some recent lawsuits, but that is nice. Now, you're not actually drawing on the clay. You're actually carving into the clay, but I find this very useful. Plus, you need pens and things for writing, but this one, eh, once you use it for clay, it's not going to work too well. This is another must-have tool. And again, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but it's a metal wire. Now, this is a bigger metal wire than that last one I showed you. Uh, it's a little smaller in pencil lead, but it's, it's pretty small, and it's V'd. I rarely use this side. It's a little rounder. This works great for wrinkles and all sorts of details. Smaller paintbrush. More of the same. This is a, just a different version of the finger tool. I'm sure that's not the right name. Now this, I use these rakes. These are a little different kind of rake, but they work wonderfully. This is thicker wires. And so you can come in and do some nice wrinkling. These are thin little wires, and there's more of them. They just, mm, they just bring an organicness to the sculpture. And a lot of times for smoothing, you can scrape them this way and scrape them this way. But I actually use these also to follow the wrinkles toward the end of the sculpture, just to kind of get that feel that the skin, you know, is wrinkled up and after years of being in a bad mood. Monsters are in a bad mood. Um, most of the time. <laughs> this is another. You just have to have it. Don't, don't, you don't even think about it. You've, you'll have to go to a specialty place. You are not going to find this at uh, Michael's or Home uh, Hobby Lobby. This is going to be something you'll have to probably order. There's Ken's Tools, uh, Reynolds. Reynolds, you need to be friends with Reynolds because Reynolds has a lot of tools. I'm um, not sure about this specific kind. I know Ken's does, and there's some other places. Um, but it's, it's little teeth, and it's kind of a triangular shape. This thing, I, and I use, the tri I use that one more than this side, uh, which is rounded. I don't know. This changed my life. I, I, I had sculpted probably 20 years before I was introduced to this, maybe more. <laughs> it's like... Oh man, I just, it just changed my life. You can come in and like pull and get nasal labial folds just right. And I, I use it for wrinkles, like the major wrinkles. I don't know why it works so good. It's also used for smoothing. You can scrape this way and that way. Um, wonderful, wonderful tool. We're almost done. This is a little point. It's got a, a very small balls on either end and, and you can use them for for um, pores and things. I use that quite a bit. This is a tool that, uh, now the, 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 this is not something you just have to have, but it's got a bunch of little points on it and you can go in for texturing. Um, uh, some of the sponging can get some texturing in your pads and things, but when you gotta get more specific and, and maybe a little deeper, and that and I'm sure I've said this in, in uh, uh, other monster labs, but always make sure that your wrinkles and things are not too subtle because the plaster wears out when you're doing a rub out, it'll just wash right out of your little 
cracks and things. So be bold, get some deep wrinkles in there, try to smooth them out and make them look believable, but something that can grab the paint when you're doing a rub out, because rub outs are the way to go. All right, I think that I have, uh, those are just multiples. So this area, oh, one other thing, the fan. A fan is very nice because you can turn a fan on when you're working and and speed up if you're getting you know close to your large anatomy finished and you want to get your clay uh, hardening a little bit. Uh, a fan's really nice. You got to be careful to not like the other day. I went to lunch. Ah, the fan wasn't on, was it? Maybe it was. But I came back. And, oops, it was too dry. Um, and you can wet. The, you know, that's what this is for. You can re-wet the. Uh, the clay, lay a, a rag on it, a wet rag, and put the bag on it and, and bring it back. But um, I use a fan all the time. And uh, make sure the fan is black, all black. I'm not sure why that's important, but it's important to me. But anyway, a fan uh, is very useful in this department. Um, but so as you're setting this up, light is very important. You need good overhead lights. The new LED lights you can get for, oh, what, we just bought some like $24 for a four foot light and they're nuclear. Um, it's nice if the lights, instead of having one directly overhead, get them as high as you can in the corners so they're aiming like this and they crisscross. That'll help with shadows. The same is true in, uh, in the painting department, but uh, that's, uh, very helpful to have good light and then of course your your gooseneck lights um, but you'll want to set up and and here's one thing um, uh, you just look at your workspace and get like a director's chair and it doesn't have to be a director's chair but sit down and visualize what would be the best use of the space where can I put the table sometimes you want to put them up against the wall um, like in this situation I'm not up against the wall. I have stuff behind me. I have stuff on the table and I can look out, you know, in case there's somebody else in the room working and we're, we're, we, we're conversing or something. Um, but uh, you just try to be smart about the layout. Of course, you can move tables around and stuff around, but it's nice to get it set up right the first time or as close to right as you can. It, when you work, you'll figure stuff out. Um, so... That's pretty much it. You're gonna, this area can be, what I discussed in this area could be divided into two rooms, uh, even three. So you would have uh, a, a drafting room where you do your illustrating and so forth and a nice table. That could be a whole room or it could be just a nice area in a room. Again, good light. Then your sculpting area a sturdy table, because some of these sculptures get heavy and stuff, you slam stuff down on them. Good, sturdy table. Um, and if you can't find a sturdy table, make one. Just If you know a friend that does um, metal, you can make them out of wood, but metal is just so much better. Um, and, uh, uh, but there's, you know, there's a lot of good tables out there to, to be found, or, eh, you know, you can buy them. But, but anyway, you may have to go to a... a uh, a supply house that sells to um, to manufacturers to get a good couple of tables but anything you're doing molding on and sculpting on should be pretty stout um, so that's kind of taste for where they go and so forth and then the final part of it is molding now molding can be another separate room or all three of these could be in the same room but kind of divide it out. This is where the molds go because the you don't want to be getting plaster on your sculpting table. It's just, it's a mess. You know, you can do it if you have to and scrape it up and stuff. That's what this is for. But if you can kind of divide the departments, even if they're in one nice garage, it just makes life better. And you, and you have all the things you need for that area right by it, you know, on shelves and things. All right, so um, that's enough of that. <clears throat> uh, anyway, we'll go up and go over paint and we'll be done. See you there.
you have entered the Xenomorph Command Center. Here's the thing. I'm still a nerd after all these years. No, it... We had a situation here at Distortions. This is a little life hack. I'll, I'll give you quick, because I got a lot to go through here, and I don't like these tapes to be so long, but um, I was thinking about that as I was coming upstairs, and I thought, well, the length of this tape, you could probably go to the hardware store twice. If you don't watch the tape, you'll probably have to go to the hardware store a hundred times over various, oh, I need that. Oh, I didn't think about that. So I don't feel so bad. But anyway, here's a life hack. We, somebody put some mattresses. Uh, we were getting ready for Monster Day and they put some mattresses, leaned them up against the building. Somebody else came along and either lit them or blew them up. <laughs> and it caught the building on fire. So for the last three months, we've had to have a temporary wall and it was a mess, but I learned something. I, I kind of had all my bottles over here. It's like, wow, it's so much easier. I'm not running back and forth there. And then I did that thing I talked about. I set a chair down and I looked at it and I visualized, well, what could I do to make it better? And so I came up with this you know, U-shaped command center thing where everything is right there. You just, you know, here's the stuff you're going to be using for that run and stuff you put out. Um, the only thing that isn't here is paint mixing and ink mixing, but um, uh, they're nearby and they don't have to do those that often. So all the quartz sprayers with all the different colors are here. And all my spray bottles and air guns and medium-sized guns, everything is in arm's length. And so I laid it out and had Mike make the metal stuff and all. And so it's better than it was. So here's the life hack. If something bad happens, make it better. Go back in and say, make it better. And, and then, then it's kind of like, well, you know, it's a good thing that fire happened because now I've got this really good, efficient pain area. Uh, and I found that in life, a lot of times people like, they'll have something bad happen to them. One personality is like, oh, my life's horrible, poor me. And so they end up wallowing in it and they, they end up, it, it was bad and it, it, it never got good. And somebody else, like they just, all right, they duff themselves off and they're going down the road. And then like a year or two later, they're like saying stuff like, I'm so glad that this happened because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be with this person or I wouldn't be in this town or I wouldn't have that, you know. And so, eh, you know, it's the old saying, corny as it is, life hands you lemons, make lemonade. So uh, there, I got that corny thing out. But anyway, so, I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can, but there's a lot to go through. And I apologize for that, but I will zippity doo dah. Okay, the first thing you're going to need is an air compressor somewhere, probably away from where you work if that's possible, because they make the devil's own noise. If it has to be in the garage with you or something or in the basement, well, then try to get a quiet one. But you'll need couplers, um, uh, the quick connect couplers. And this is female, and then the, you know, the male goes into, uh, into the compressor. This uh, I end up using a lot, because sometimes you gotta get down low, and it's just a little chair on wheels sort of thing. I've got a table I push around. I won't pull that out, but that's nice. You can put your, if you've got a lot of stuff, you may not have to have wheels and move work tables around. Um, very important, wire brushes. So wire brushes for every time, almost every time I work with a quartz sprayer, I will clean it up like that. And it's very helpful. Let's see, where am I? Right there. I will clean them like that, make sure they're running right, and I'll pull the trigger while I'm cleaning, and that cleans the tip off really well. So wire brushes, more big trash cans. Now these are just jugs that are one gallon and uh, I mix the paint and then put them in here and then they're right here to work with. So I've got like a rainbow of colors. I've just moved in like a week ago to this new area. So it's not quite done. I've got all my quartz sprayers, different colors up here. 
Uh, when I'm working with them, sometimes I'll have them in the barrel, but um, you don't have to have 25 quart sprayers. You can have one quart sprayer and then rinse it out and spray it. But I recommend a quart sprayer if you're doing big stuff. Um, I'll go over this real quick. This is um, a Pache gun that uh, I just got and this thing works wonderfully. And it's like if you're doing mass or something, this is your quartz sprayer. Quartz sprayer is like, I know there's low airflow things and they can help, but this thing's great. It's like, like a big airbrush. And so um, I use them for gums and teeth and things, but um, this is really, really nice because spraying a mask with an airbrush, that's not great. Now uh, I had an air hair dryer downstairs Hair dryer. sometimes you need to dry stuff fast. You're waiting to epoxy it and stuff. Got things to do, place to go, people see. Uh, so that, um, this is a really good uh, air filter, uh, gas mask sort of thing. And um, this thing, this is made by 3M. They're not paying me, <laughs> but it's got like a soft blue thing which works great with my beard and uh, and these things work fantastic um, and and I, I probably can use one of these a year or something this one's been around a while maybe not that long but quite a while okay so I'm gonna start going through the shelves and stuff this is uh, a lightweight sheetrock tape and use this for patching seams uh, you put contact cement on them and then put this stuff on then latex goes on after that duct tape of course uh, clear cups I use these I'll cut them down and use them to mix um, now but I, I use the used ones I, I bring my drinks in and when I'm done I'll, I'll use them cut them down like this and mix uh, epoxy um, this is the way to buy epoxy it's if you can find it it's uh they're big bottles probably three ounce bottles and last forever the the hypodermic needles are very convenient but boy you don't get much out of it this is a gloss that i spray through a quartz sprayer it's liquitex and it's gloss medium and varnish let's see if i can get that little closet closer that you want to have that's for all your mouths and things. When you get the eyes, I like to use epoxy or going over blood. Now this is black pigment. You can get this at the paint store and I use a little bit of this to mix in the blood when I make big amounts of blood or I'm not sure if they just sell this around Halloween time. Boy, this is messed up, but this is food color. <laughs> black food color never seen such a thing till this year so you can put a few drops in your red and it makes it a lot more realistic um, this if you can find a supplier um, that this is like a restaurant supplier uh, you can order these online this is a quart of red food color now this brand is spice classics and it's a good color some of them are a little weird um, reds but um, this one works really well and this is blood I have blood mixed up as kind of a red flesh fresh blood and then I have a real dark blood that I use for a wretched that's nasty gnarly chip brushes I always have a box of these chip brushes around they you use them for dry brushing all sorts of things hot glue sticks um, and of course hot glue guns and I would always have one in reserve because when they die and you're trying to get something out the door, well, that's very irritating. So it's good to have an extra on hand. Um, this is Weldwood Contact Cement and get the original. It works very well. Um, we use that for patching. Now I found an interesting thing. You know, you'd think that paper towels would be the way to go, that you just use them and then throw them away. I'm going to wait for this train to get by here. Stand by. Okay, he's through. Now, here's the thing. This lasts forever. I, I, you know, I use them, I start and I'll use them, I'll fold them and put them on the back of my neck for, uh, so the strap's not cutting in my neck too bad. 
And then when that's getting kind of dusty and stuff, then I'll use it to clean up and stuff and, and clean up paint and blood and stuff. And then when it gets a little nasty, then I'll use it for hair um, uh, or, or um, uh, just grittier stuff. And then at the end of its life, I'll use it for um, metal prep. You know, you can, you can wipe up uh, the metal with, with uh, metal prep on this and they last forever. I mean, it, you know, a rag might last weeks and, and one of these is maybe the equivalent of half a roll of paper towels or a roll. I don't know, but it's, it's nicer than paper towels. Um, stapler and staples, use them all the time. I don't want to get into why, they're just, this is one of those tools. Um, moving right, silicone. Use silicone for all sorts of things. It's, it's better than hot glue a lot of times for gluing on stuff. Um, this particular uh, caulk gun works better. It's got the hook. Some of these, you squeeze them and then they keep pushing. So you set them down, it's, it's making a mess. I don't know what brand it is, but uh, you know, Home Depot. Safety goggles. Now these are kind of awkward. Uh, these are more for like sawing wood, but, but some kind of safety goggles, there is always times when you, you need them. Um, now I'll go over this. This is, these are inks that I use when, you know, I'll put in a quartz sprayer and spray a run. Um, so this, just different colors of inks. Then these are the colors of ink that I would recommend. There's a bright yellow and then a green. It's kind of a bright green. Um, I don't use these two very much, so that's why they're smaller bottles. This is, uh, what is the name of you? Penance? Some ridiculous name like that. Anyway, it's kind of a bright green, medium green, bright yellow. And then these are the main guys. This is Antler Brown. This is all FW. And, and, and I use this stuff like a lot. This is black. Um, this is Purple Lake and red. And this red is called um, Flame Red. Then this is roundy blue. Use a lot of that. And then just white. Uh, and that's used to make these. And then it's also used to make these, which these are um, white with the color and little bits of black, whatever. Like this is for green eyes, blue eyes, brown eyes, purple eyes, um, and a very, very dark gray eye for aliens. And these are translucents. Now the translucents are made with um, uh, the ink and then 70% rubbing alcohol and it's, they're fairly thin. I think I use these, I think they're all 50-50. So it's half 70% rubbing alcohol, half blue ink, maroon ink. I use uh, blue and purple a lot for detailing the face. And then of course black and then white. I'll mix uh, antler brown, a little yellow and black to get kind of a eye color that's off white. Very important. So that's the top shelf. Uh, here is some little tools and things that you need in the paint room. Scissors. Glasses, I'll take these off. Tape measure. I, I can't go into why you need all this stuff, but trust me on this. Um, now, if, you have, if you're in one room and you've got a tape measure right there by your sculpting, fine. But if you have two rooms, get two. Um, needle nose, regular pliers, uh, flat screwdriver, prying lids off and things. Um, Again, I'll go over this stuff in Monster Labs, so I don't want to get too much because this is going to be too long anyway. Razor blades, razor knife, crescent wrench, 
hairbrush. Now, this is like, um, you know, it's not a dog hairbrush. Dog hairbrushes work too, but it's kind of got the little soft plastic things, semi-soft. Now, this is a weird one, needles. Now, these are sewing needles. Uh, and what I'll do is, I just made this like yesterday. Uh, this is a hair punch. And so basically I took a dowel rod and, and then drilled a teeny hole, put the hot glue in it, stuck this needle in. This is a, like a, a machine needle and stuck that needle in with hot glue and then put a hot glue around it. I also drew a little picture. Now this is probably too small to see, but it's a little picture and it's got the fork. That tells me which way the prongs are going because they're so teeny. This one especially, because this is for facial hair. They're so teeny that you can't really tell what you're doing. So it helps to, okay, that's the way I'm saying And you punch them in, you can. So that's why that's there. Red pen. This, you can try different kinds. Uh, some are thicker lines than others, uh, but I use them for veins in the eyes. This is a nice little tool. It's basically just a coupler, a male coupler. Eh, I'm not quite in camera, am I? Male coupler and uh, then a uh, connector, quick connector, and a little piece of uh, quarter inch tubing. You plug that into the air hose and you can dust and blow things off. Um, Phillips driver. Now, again, if you're in the same room, don't need it. Uh, battery drill, Phillips driver. I use them in paint. Well, I, I was using them up here for this thing. You use them. I don't know why you shouldn't be using them in paint, but you do. Okay. You can go to Hobby Lobby or a place like that, get pipe cleaners in bulk, and they, I use them to clean the airbrushes. Also, um, ammonia. I didn't cover that over here. I didn't think of it, but I use ammonia and water. And um, so the uh, ammonia, I use industrial strength ammonia. It's pretty nasty stuff. And you, you know, it, it, you don't want to get in your eyes and stuff. So I maybe regular ammonia, but not sudsy, just clear ammonia. And uh, that helps break down the inks and, and water rinses your uh, guns. Use those a lot. Then I've got a little box of brushes here, different brushes, they're throwaway. Now I discovered um, a long time ago that you can put brushes in um, acetone and, and reuse them, even though you've used them to put on epoxy. And that's mostly what I do with these. So um, that's a nice way to save them, or you can buy them. I buy these, you get like a bunch for 15 bucks and, and but you know, a lot of times I throw them away because I don't have time to deal with the acetone, but, but you, you have to really put them in the acetone and keep cleaning off the brush and so forth. These are just strainers for, um, for paint. It comes in very handy, especially when you're like filling something like this. You don't want to have lumps and stuff in it. So um, when you're dealing with latex paint. This is just a series of different kinds of spray paint. I use primer gray, primer reddish brown, black, stainless steel. Stainless steel is so much better than um, uh, silver, bright silver or something. It looks, just looks much better for what I'm doing anyway. Now this is tractor equipment paint. The reason I have this red paint is sometimes I have to put blood on bags and this stuff will stick to bags. I'll spray them first with acetone. Now these are some nasty chemicals, but read the labels because they do the job, but you know, you can need exhaust uh, fans and stuff. But anyway, this is red tractor equipment and industrial enamel, and you can splat this on a bag and it will stick, especially if the bag's been sprayed with acetone. But white primer, white, gray, brown, black paint, and stainless steel, I use those more than, I've got a bunch of other colors. Those I use more than anything. Um, now this is kind of a cool thing. You can get a, a knife sharpener and a big old knife like this. Now these um, work not quite as good as a razor, 
<clears throat> and you can buy... Those tri trains... I don't know why they think they have to keep blowing the horn. Anyway, they drive me crazy. You can buy gloves that are like cut resistant. And, um, and so when you're dealing with a big knife like this and you're sharpening it a very sharp, um, it's kind of nice to have a glove like this. Uh, on the other hand, yeah, I have to have it in both hands, just the hand that might get cut off because, you know. But not necessary razor blades are fine it's just nice because you know the way razor blades sometimes they you hit metal and and they're dull and this you can just go back and sh sharpen it quickly but i would read the reviews on the sharpeners make sure you get a good one <clears throat> going back to this shelf of course um we do a lot of stuff with wire ties and snips are very nice Another hair poker. Now this tool we use a lot. We use it for dremeling um, and um, uh, you know seams and things and dremeling imperfections off the rubber. Wonderful tool. And it's just it's got these little um, these little um, sander discs. Uh, I get these at Harbor Freight. They're cheap. They're great. More needle nose, scissor sharpener. Very nice, this is friskers. Stick pins with stuff, sometimes you're trying to hold clothes on and things, stick pins are nice. They're not really stick pins, they're needles with a little ball on top. I doubt you can see that, but it's just so you can stick them in. Um, rubber gloves, now, you always wanna get black rubber gloves. Why do I have to have black? I don't know, but black's better. And um, these are um, these are nice. Again, Harbor Freight. Um, you can get thinner ones and get 100 per pack. These are 50 per pack, but I found that these will last longer. I can I can get by on a day with two pair of these and go all day. The thinner ones keep getting torn and stuff. So I don't I don't think it does you any good to get the cheaper ones. That's my opinion. <clears throat> Mondo likes the cheap ones because he gets foam in his hands and he wants to throw them out. It's different different situation. Okay, let's talk about hair quickly. Now the hair normally is in the other room, but I wanted to, when you'd be totally prepared to do whatever you want. So these are wigs that you can get a variety of wigs. That's like a man's wig. This is like long black hair. We use this for the cutoff Alice Cooper head. Um, the long ones are nice because we have a lot of flat back stuff. So it, it fills them out and then when you dress them, they're like three dimensional but a variety of wigs are nice. Um, you can get them from Morris Costumes. Morris Costumes took over Lacey Wigs. They have wonderful stuff. West Bay has wonderful stuff like this, but you can go to a local beauty supply place and get this. This is actually human hair and they put it on this weft and, and so it's sewn together and you can just lay it on and wonderful wonderful stuff this is braid it's very cheap um, and uh, and it glues on well it pokes well this doesn't poke so well and <laughs> this is not great this stuff the braid pokes great this wonderful wonderful stuff uh, we're nearing the end okay hot glue gun talked about that before Heat gun. These are very nice. This one's near death. Um, heat gun. Uh, so many uses for this. I I um, I don't know. You're trying to get labels off of barrels. You're trying to expand a hose so you can fit it on a fitting. Lots of lots of things. Not critical, but nice. Um, this is a plastic hammer. A, a rubber mallet would work as well. It's great when you're resealing house paint buckets. Now this is something that uh, the, you can get in quartz or whatever. This is indoor and it's important that it's indoor paint because the outdoor paint has some bad chemicals and stuff in it. Indoor paint, you, you decide what color you want your monster to be and you go to the paint store, you buy that color paint, you mix it with 
latex and water and it's basically a third a third and a third so you know one cup latex one cup paint one cup water i usually use a little less than one cup of water it, it, it kind of depends on your airbrush and things um, paint sticks you can go to the paint store and buy a box of paint sticks now we use them like crazy you can try to always get them to give you a handful whenever you buy paint but I, we just buy the box we use them for lots of things you'll find out why 32 ounce cups now these are great for mixing like when i'm doing the the paint i can do one of each of these what you know you use the same cup so you pour the paint in first dump it in the jug then you take a couple latex dump it in the jug and then you put your water in stir it up a little so you're getting the paint and latex out pour that in and now you've got three quarters of a gallon which you'll be able to shake up before you paint it and you're ready to go you can paint a lot of mass with three quarters of a gallon or full body monsters all right you will need many bottles of 70 percent rubbing alcohol um funnel is nice because now here's another little monster hack so you 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 put a bottle of this in a bucket when, when now say you've already sprayed your rub out on the monsters you put a quart of this in a bucket and these are like industrial sponges they're uh you know tolerant to solvents and things they last real well but it doesn't have to be this kind um and you you rub the thing out and in our case you know it might be a hundred mass then it's all mucky and stuff and you would think well you throw that out i used to throw it out and then i realized no wait a minute i can with this little funnel pour it back in and you know you might reclaim three quarters of a bottle and then you can use it to mix a similar colored rub out and it's really not too strong so you can I could use red and make black. It doesn't matter that much. Um, save you a, a bunch of money and a bunch of trouble. And, you know, it's just less stuff the planet has to take back. Okay, here's a really big one. Airbrushes. Now, let's grab one. I use Pache H3, sometimes H1. This is the lifeblood of the paint room, these little guys, and they last forever. Uh, you can replace the cones and things. Um, I went over airbrushing a little, so I won't too much, but you, you can buy them just like this. I like the short hoses because I walk around a lot. You may want longer hoses, but I walk around with the, the hose around my neck, so I'm not tripping over it. Then you can get the little glass bottles, put your inks and stuff, and dedicate. It's nice if you buy a half dozen, then you can dedicate, and you just grab, okay, I need a little blue, now I need a little maroon, now I need some black, and not have to clean it every time. Another um, way to do it is put these little cups on, and um, they're just a little, a little cup that fits into it, and that's nice. You can put the ink in, spray whatever you're spraying, dump the rest back in the bottle and then just clean it with ammonia and water. And, um, and it's just, if you're having to change colors a lot, the little cups are nice. Uh, these spray bottles, wonderful for speckling. Now this, you can do, you can take a chip brush, cut it in half and speckle it on like this, or you can rock and roll and speckle it with these. And so I have uh, red, white, blue and brown and also black for tombstones and those you just have to kind of come up with you take the droppers uh, and and just okay you know like white i know i use like 20 droppers full but then blue i use eight or something and this is for a whole quart of 70 percent rubbing alcohol you put the you know eight droppers full of blue and and you speckle it on and it just models the flesh and makes it much more realistic um spray bottles oh another thing that you should have around like say you have a big mask and it doesn't quite fit well you can use contact cement 
put it on the foam, put it on the inside of the mask, stick it in. Uh, this is uh, L200, this is a wonderful thing, but it could be more just foam like this. Uh, have foam around to make adjustments for padding, and it's not just mass, it's shoulders and all sorts of things. Just have some, some foam on hand. Um, where are we? Oh, headphones. Uh, these come in handy, especially when you're spraying with air and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of noise in a paint room. Uh, have I driven you crazy with that light yet? I thought that was fun. Now, that's, uh, that goes on when we're about to make xenomorphs. Okay, I think that that's it. There's a couple of things I want to show you over here. Clock is nice. Timer, I thought I had a timer up here, but I guess not up here. Have I gotten everything? Yes. Okay, this, it turns out, is really nice to have this, right? Everything's in reach, everything you need. This U-shaped thing I really love, not necessary, especially if you're, you know, just painting a few things. Um, but I really like it. Let's look at this. Oh, a step ladder. You know, a step ladder with a few steps. When you're working on big monsters, sometimes you got to get up on the top of their heads and stuff. Um, air fittings, you'll need various air fittings for the hoses on your airbrushes, quartz sprayers, um, fans. Now, I have fans on wheels. Let me pull one of these out. This is very nice, and it's nice to have it on wheels so that you can, you know, aim it at something and go work somewhere else, and then you come back and they're ready to go. Extension cords. Um, you know, uh, 25, 50 feet, depending on the size of your room. Um, broom with a scoop shovel. Again, if you're in the same room, you don't need to repeat that. Um, hmm. Oh, magic markers and a notepad. Uh, you may think you're able to um, remember stuff, but sometimes when you're doing stuff, you think of something that's great. You need to write that down. You should have a notepad by your bed. Write stuff down. I, I wish I could blame it on old age, but I've been forgetting stuff since I was a teenager. So when you need something or you think of a great idea for a great monster, write it down. Don't think you'll remember because I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten things that, who knows, it could have made a million bucks. Um, let's see, music. Now, music is pretty important around here. And um, I've got these uh, speakers I bought. Now, you don't have to be this loud, but it is nice. Now, in the sculpting room, I said keep the music a little more subdued, usually. Not too loud. In the paint room, that's a different story. When you're trying to paint a bunch, of course, if you just paint a mask, maybe not. But when I'm trying to paint a room of 60 grandmas, Man, I need rock and roll. So I've got these speakers. Trust me, they're loud. We've got uh, big subs and stuff. Makes, makes it fun, especially if you like good music. Now, if you don't like good music, mm, I, you have my pity. Now, now, listen, monsters, for whatever reason, they do not like improvisational jazz or country western. Otherwise, you're okay. Um, let's see. We don't know why they're like that. We don't even know. Okay, I think we're done. So. That is everything that I could think of that you need to make any kind of monster 
that your heart desires, anything your brain, your twisted brain can come up with, you can make with this stuff and the stuff I showed you before. So, you can terrorize your city. You can make children cry. Whatever you want to do. Now you know how to do it. You've got the tools, you set up your workspace, and that's it. Have fun and, uh, you know, if you want to put pictures of some of your monsters and stuff in some of these time, or you know, the comment section of these videos, that's cool. Anyway, good luck with all of that. I appreciate you sitting through this thing. Sorry it was a little long, but trust me, it was worth it. If you want to make monsters, I just handed you 40 years worth of things that I had to learn the hard way. So anyway, have fun. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, so now you know every single thing you need to make any kind of monster that you can dream up. The thing is now, you got to dig deep into this and come up with something really strange and unusual. But my guess is anybody that would sit and watch a video like this for over an hour has got a strange and demented mind. Good luck with that. Talk to you soon.